And Hugh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, David. It's great to be here with all of you today. Um, and uh, David, thank you so much for organising this and uh, having the vision to do it. And Craig, thank you for, uh, for uh, uh, sponsoring us and allowing us to, uh, to get together and talk about really the yin and the yang of uh, wealth management and, and investing. Because as David said, I'm going to talk about uh, human behaviour and David's going to talk about some investing strategies and what we both deal with at the end of the day is strategies and techniques to deal with human emotion. And we've also got uh, in our audience Daniel Crosby, who's also very well known in the field of behavioral finance, and there's some others here that, 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 that I know as well. And uh, you know, this is a whole area that's, that's really emerged. And you know, what, what does get in the way of investor success is, is human emotions. And so that's what I'm going to talk about from, from the behavioural side. I've been doing this quite a while. Uh, I'm a, actually as a, a reformed accountant uh, originally. I'm not, a, I'm not a psychologist, although once I uh, stepped out of the accounting world and built a uh, successful financial services business myself in Australia, um, and I still have a funds management business there, I realised what was getting in the way for, for most people was, was their human emotions and you know, my purpose with this is to help people at the end of the day become more financially self-empowered by understanding who they are, but also to help the advisors out as well. And uh, the way I look at uh, investing and portfolios is it is uh, a portfolio of decisions rather than positions. So, you know, to bring that to life, often when you uh, meet a new client, they'll, they'll show you what they've got, and they've got their 30, 40, 50, sometimes 100 uh, positions. I've seen all of it from, with people from, you know, half a million dollars of wealth to a billion dollars of wealth. And a lot of the time, those investment decisions reflect who they are. They reflect their behavioural biases. And if we're to help that person uh, grow in the future, we need them to understand what those biases are uh, and, and, uh, and then learn to manage around those. So in financial planning today, uh, in today's world, it's a lot more focused on goals-based uh, uh, planning. How do we help a client achieve their goals? The part that I deal with is uh, not only the goals-based planning part, because that is important, but it's the human emotions that get in the way of someone achieving their goals. And markets and life goes up and down over periods of time, and all of us react differently to those life and market events. And what I want you to be able to, un you know, what I seek to do with our financial DNA solution is to help you get a, a prediction up front of how people will behave in those up and down markets. So I'm going to show you our technology solution today for discovering human behaviour and how you can work with that uh, in a holistic wealth management uh, platform and then how that ties into uh, what David's doing uh, around uh, investing and with an algorithmic uh, strategy. So what do clients use our solution for to improve the advisor-client communication? If that is broken, everything's broken. And that is the same between husband and husbands and wives and within, and within the family. Right? Uh, how do you set quality life goals? So what is a person's motivations for setting their goals? That is actually a reflection of who they are as a person. So we deal with that. Then the investment decision making. So looking at uh, the risk tolerance, looking at the behavioural biases uh, that get in the way of making good decisions. And uh, you know, an area, this is also, and it's not in the blue circles there, but on the, on the bottom left there, is compliance and minimising com complaints. And, and so, you know, we're using our systems now with some, with some very large firms where it's been embedded into the compliance management uh, processes. Uh, not only, you know, so, so we're meeting two goals, improving client engagement, the productivity of the advisor with the client, but also reducing compliance risks. And, and then there's a lot of, we do a lot of family dynamics work uh, with wealthier families and helping them understand their differences and sorting out uh, what the issues might be that get in the way of wealth creation and, pr and protecting the wealth. When I started this journey on human behaviour, remember I was an accountant originally, I had this theory that uh, when people are under pressure, 
they would revert to this natural hardwired behaviour. They would go back to the animal instincts and that's what takes over. And I was lucky enough to have two psychologists, one in Australia and one, in, one here in Atlanta, uh, who confirmed that, that idea to me and that theory to me. And really what you often see when you meet a new client is the masked behaviour versus what's going on underneath. And if I use an example with that, uh, when I, in about 2005, when I was in the early days of this, I, I had a new client called Frank Butler. And Frank was 39 years old, he had a wife and three children, and he just sold his, sold his stake in a technology business. He was one of five partners. And he said to me, I, Hugh, I don't want to take any risk with my money. I thought, this is odd, because you're a founder of a, a technology business, you're an entrepreneur, and you don't want to take any risk with your money. What I found out was that his parents went bankrupt when he was eight years old. And he said, I am a risk taker, but I don't want to, at this stage, I don't want to take risk with my money. But that was a very important learning lesson for me because what I found out was his natural instinctive behaviour was to take risks. But his conscious thinking right now was not to take risks. And I had to deal with that all the way through the financial planning cycle, and we still do. Because he's still a little nervous at taking risks with money, but he's always asking, where are the returns? And all of you in this room uh, know what, what I'm getting at here. And so I have, to, I have to, uh, to manage his emotions all the way through to feel, for him to feel protected. But at the same time, I've got to communicate to him, well, we've invested you a little bit more cautiously than who you are. And this is why you're not getting the returns that get generated. And so that was a conversation. And uh, it's always a conversation. And it's a conversation with... Ah, now it's moving. It's a conversation with every client. And so what I want to know is, up front, what are the conversations I'm going to have with each client because each client's unique. And when I say client, it's, it's, it, it, it's uh, the husband and the wife and potentially with the children. And what we do is we get the clients, every client uh, that works with us or, uh, and their financial advisors, go through the financial DNA discovery process. This is an online process. It takes 10 to 12 minutes to do online. Uh, 46 questions are completed. We do have one with 12 questions. It's very quick and slick, and you're going to get all this robust information I'm going to talk to you about uh, in a minute. And this is how I learned that Frank was really a risk taker and how I was going to have to relate to him. But, but, but the other side, what came out of the conversations was his desire for caution. Um, and we have this information uh, in, in varying levels of complexity in terms of the reports from one page reports so that you just get this in uh, five key items that you need to discuss with a client to uh, very detailed reports if you really want to become uh, a more of a coach to, to, to the client. Uh, but, all the, but all the data's there. But what we're focused on is this natural instinctive behaviour. Not the learned socialised behaviour that you see when you first meet uh, a, new, a new client. So what's the type of information you get? Now this is very simplified um, and, not, and, and not all of it. But what I really wanted to highlight out of this is that uh, you get to see your clients in different styles. So for example, on that graph there, I am an initiator. And that means I'm a bit more goal driven, a bit more results driven. I'll take the risks in looking at my portfolio. I take a consolidated view. I have 10 positions, so long as one has made me 1,000%, I'm happy and all the rest can be losses. Because that's, that's, that's what it is. So hopefully, if you learn what that means, actually, you will uh, not make so many dud decisions with the bad ones and um, you know, learn to focus improving your decision making rather than just accepting that losses are okay. Uh, some of us in the top right hand corner there are spenders. You want to know that. Some of us are going to follow the herd. They're the dinner party investor. Heard a great idea at lunch or at dinner and I'm sold and I'm going to jump into that. We like all the new shiny things, we're instinctive, we're not going to look at the details. Then others, like my wife, are a little bit more risk averse and loss averse. And there's been a lot of uh, you know, behavioural uh, research done on, on those areas and uh, you know, uh, Nobel, Nobel Prizes. But some of us are really averse to a loss. Some of us have regret when we make decisions. Some of us will sell the winners to get the gratification of a profit and hang on to all the losers. And, and, and that's just, it's behavioural. But we're all wired to do that at different degrees. 
And then, then of course, for, for all of you, you've got in the bottom left-hand corner, you've got, the, you've got the engineer type client. Now, I know a lot of financial advisors are very engaging people, want to move fast. And you can get the engineer and you've got to provide them all the research and all the details. They like to mentally account in their portfolio. They want to bucket it all up. It's just a different type of person. Nothing's right or wrong here. It's all about understanding who you are and how you're going to deal with these biases. And that's what we show you how to do. We do work with risk profiling. Um, so we have a risk profiler built into the system based on someone's natural hardwired behavior. And we look at two elements of risk specifically here. The risk propensity, will you jump off the cliff and take the risk versus your ability to live with the losses. And what I found is those behaviors can be quite different. And so I've still, I still know people out there who are crying because five and six years later because they took a risk, it didn't work out. And this can be a gap because they're emotionally wounded from taking the risks. Others won't take chances, but can, once they do take it, they can live with the consequences very well. So we found it very powerful to, you know, to work with those differences. Then we, we put everybody across seven groups, which is just used as a framework to help build that core portfolio and what element's going to go into cash uh, and, and you know, how wired up is uh, somebody to take a lot of risks. So I actually happen to be in group seven. So I'll jump off cliffs and you know, occasionally do wild things with money. Um, even though I may be a more reserved person and the people I work with don't know that I'm going to do that, but that's, that's how I work. The guy Frank that I mentioned before was a group six naturally. But his portfolio actually started out, 60% of it started out at group three till we got him comfortable. So we've worked him up to that natural hardwired behavior through a mentoring process. Um, you know, when we get to talking about uh, trade ideas later, uh, where the, you know, it's algorithmic based trading, that's going to be for a, portfolio, a component of the portfolio where someone's prepared to take a little bit more risk. So from this graph, we can work out which clients are going to be more comfortable with that. And that's going to be the clients in five, six, and seven are going to be more, potentially more comfortable with that kind of trading strategy. But of course, we've got to have a client conversation. And what we do with, um, you know, how do you deal with risk? First thing is, and there are a lot of elements to, to, a, to a risk profile. It's not just a singular number. And we've broken it down into a number of components here. The first thing I want to know is, what risk is somebody taking in their portfolio right now? Where are they on the Richter scale as far as their portfolio is concerned? And often, most people are taking more risk in their portfolio than they should be. Then, the next one is, what is the risk need? How much risk do you need to take to achieve your goals? That is a financial calculation, it's not behavioral. What is your risk capacity? What is your ability to lose money and still achieve your goals and maintain your life? That is a financial calculation. Then we get into the behavior. What is your natural instinctive behavior to take risks? What is your learned behaviors to take risks? How much financial education have you had? So we then look at those elements and align them to the risk need and the risk capacity. It might be, if you're like me there, I'm a very high risk taker, but I actually don't need to take as much risk to achieve my goal. So why should I take those risks? That's the conversation you have with the advisor. And then you land the plane um, between the advisor and the client on what the ultimate risk profile will be for building the portfolio. And so the technology we work with does all of that. Um, now, I've talked a lot about emotion, you know, and, and managing emotion is first part is to help the client understand themselves. The advisors have emotions as well. They've got to understand themselves. Now, how do we bring this to the portfolios? And, and you know, portfolios themselves have emotions in them. And one way of removing emotion completely out of a portfolio, because remember, emotions is really what is the difference between success and failure as far as investing is concerned. You could just have ETFs, right? But that's just going to be running along with the market. You can go into funds of varying styles. A lot of the funds out there, some will make money for a few years and then they lose money. They're not all performers. And I think some of you have begun to, begun to learn that and <coughs> ETFs have uh, increased. But the other way of driving out emotion out of the portfolio is an algorithmic based uh, portfolio uh, uh, techniques like Trade Ideas has. Okay? And so that, that, that can have a component in, in the portfolio to, to create the sizzle. And if done properly, you are going to outperform the market. 
if, 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 you know, and so that's really the strategy. And there are a number of ways to do it, but trade ideas have really uh, nutted that out with the algorithms. Um, and so the last thing we do, so just to wrap up uh, here, um, is in our system, which I think is a great tool for the advisors and the clients, we have uh, what's called the market move. So when you've completed your financial DNA, uh, you can uh, bring the, as the advisor, you can go back into our system and have a look at where are your, all your clients as far as the market is concerned today. So if the market's gone up a few percent, there'll be some of your clients that are exuberant and there'll be some who's starting to exhibit fear. And this is all depends on their style and, their, and what their biases are. If the market goes down, some will be fearful, others will say, gee, this is a great opportunity. I'm gonna buy with my ears pinned back. What we do is we can help you prioritize your client bases by understanding what the market mood is of every client uh, and then you know, then we provide you the script of what to say to each client so that you can enhance the communication and relate to them on their terms and dealing with those same uh, market terms. We actually can help you assign which advisor or which person in your office is best calling up the client, particularly when there's a problem. Because you know, some clients don't want to just be called up and, and, and told that, uh, well, we know we made you 13% uh, last year, we've done a great job. They're actually worried about the school fees and, and their daughter's got a problem. Right? So, so you know, this technology really makes it easy for all of you to deploy human behavior without having to be a behavioral scientist. Uh, for those of you who have not completed financial DNA and you would like to know a little bit more about yourself and try it out before you deal with a client, go to our website at financialdna.com. There is a start a free trial tab there. Go through it and we'll show you all the tools and how all of this works for you and then work out how you can do that with your clients. Um, we've also got you know, quite a lot of books and resource centers, videos, there's, there's, there's tons of information so that you can learn about it. I'm just happy. If you all embrace human behavior and want to become a little bit better at understanding it, more aware of your clients, and uh, put the, cl the client at the center of the planning, help them remove their emotions, uh, dumb that, you know, dial that down, make them more confident, then, then you know, we're going to have a whole lot happier people out there uh, in the world and, and be more financially successful. So there, I will stop. Yep. Um, David? Sure. Thank you, Hugh. If anyone has any questions, we've got some time. Mike. We have a microphone, so in order to capture, we'll Which make one? sure. Which one? That one or the? Yep. Yep. Just for the sake of the audio that we're recording, you, I may not sound like I'm amplified, but if you could speak into a microphone, that'll help our recording of the event. Um, so, if anybody else, any other questions? There'll be a time afterwards, after the second presentation, where. Uh, we can do a Q&A that's more, that's, that's more global. Okay. How do you handle a question, uh, how do you handle a question uh, from a fairly f sophisticated client on counterparty risk? On which one? Counterparty risk. Counterparty risk. Like a la John Corzine. <laughs> so he's your client and he asked you about counterparty risk? Yes that he's not prepared to take counterparty risk in a, in a, in a deal? Well, I'd probably you won't take any risk at all. I'm, I'm just asking you, do you, does your algorithm cover that? Yes, um, and if you, if you talk about the fact that one of the wealthiest clients that I ever dealt with was the most cautious. Was what? The most cautious. Oh, okay. Very successful entrepreneur, made quarter of a billion dollars from his business, <clears throat> and when it came to uh, investing, didn't want to take any any, any risks with he the money. He knew too much. Hmm? He probably knew too much. <laughs> Possibly knew too much, or actually not enough about money. Oh, okay. And that's the case with a lot of them. So investment, a lot of investors, investment education, the level of investment education, rather than professional business education, is very relevant. Um, and you'll see other entrepreneurs and people that are experienced in business who are risk takers, but they don't know much about money and they don't want to get into what they don't understand. So you'll see the dialing down there. Yeah. Does that help? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Hugh.